All right, all right, I'll do it. Good thing I have an SSD. I do so uh, this is pretty much gonna be the the best g5 machine that I'm probably gonna be using from now on in future videos like I said it has 8 gigs of RAM and none of the other machines I have come anywhere close to that so hopefully this is gonna be the g5 to end all g5s what? hey what did I do that what? It actually works. Sorry that I have because I'm that doesn't five. look the same. So, uh, the hell did I do? Be the the best G5 machine that I'm probably going to be using from now on in future videos. Oh because man, I did the hard disk setup off camera. Damn it! Well, it doesn't matter anyway because I have to unplug everything in order to plug the SSD in. So might as well just get started on that. I don't know what that was. I believe this was the boot drive here. I guess. So now I gotta open this silicon power SSD. Uh, we're checking out a yet another brand here to see how it will work with uh, our current setup. Jesus Christ. How do you get this open? I remember I bought this for some reason because I watched this video from David Pogue and uh, it's like a baby's toy. Anyway, uh, it's called the OpenX. And apparently all you have to do to open things is just go like this. I'm not quite sure why I got it. I guess I was just a David Pogue fanboy or something? I don't... I don't know! Maybe I needed to read the instructions on how to use it. But really, I never actually used this portion of it. I usually just used that. And then did a little number on it. Like that. And it works tremendously better. Who knew? Okay. So. There's our SSD. No any static bag, nothing. Not even a rear label. That's interesting. Yeah, that's that, and uh, I don't even believe it comes with any kind of documentation save for the actual cardboard insert thing here. And then again, let's take a look, hold on, put an SSD somewhere, ah, that's how you install it. So, last time we tried to put an SSD in a Power Mac G5, it didn't detect it. That was with a SanDisk SSD. This is not a SanDisk SSD. So maybe it'll actually work. Now, I did have someone commenting on my videos, or sending me a message, or whatever, and he basically said there's only one brand and one, or one model of SSD that actually will work with this thing, and obviously I'm going to go ahead and try this first, and it probably won't work, and then I'll have to buy that, so... Oh well, let's just give it a shot. Now, since the Linux download is likely to take several hundred years, um, why don't we go ahead and uh, make sure we can actually see the SSD first before we go any further. Oh, shit. I forgot to plug the keyboard in. Crap, the fans are going high because I didn't put the little plastic dude head back in. Oh, crap. There. That sounds good. Now let's open that disk drive. 
Oh, thank you. Place it is. India. There we go. Let's try and make a good thumbnail image. No. Um, I don't have the SSD like, out anymore. Uh, I guess I could pull it out. Shit. Wait, this wouldn't make a good thumbnail image anyway. It has the Apple logo on the screen, not the penguin. Okay, moment of truth. Utilities. Disk utility. Gather the information, damn it! Oh god damn it! I should have been more wise! Ugh. Oh man, are you kidding me? $71 for a 120 gigabyte SSD? That's highway robbery! Except instead of getting stuck on the highway, I'm stuck with a Power Mac G5. <laughs> But fear not, fellow smokers, for I have even more SSDs we can try. So yeah, apparently, you need an SSD that supports SATA 1. But yes, pretty much every single Power Mac G5 is SATA 1. There is no SATA 2, there is no SATA 3. That sort of stuff didn't come along until the Mac Pro. So... It would really be mostly a waste of time to try and get these working, but didn't I get newer SSDs working in older computers that only had, like, SATA 1? I mean, what? It's simply a mystery I just cannot solve. So we probably won't actually bother cracking these SSDs open as kind of cool as, whoops, as kind of cool as they may be, or... So we'll save some of those for future videos. Unfortunately, that means that we can't use any SSDs for this video. But for those of you who are worried... Shit. But for those of you who are worried, I didn't buy all these SSDs just for this. Sometimes you just need a good old 7200 RPM drive to install crap on. You will... Sh you will shine another day, Silicon Power SSD! Alright. As much as I didn't want to use this for this computer again, I guess it's gonna have to happen. Well, there it goes. Let's make sure that works. Well, the download's done. So, since the disk image is 900 megs, I'm not going to have another dual layer wasted. So let's go ahead and try a USB boot here. Now there are about 40 different things that are wrong with this. First of all, I use the universal USB installer from Pentrive Linux. Not really a problem there, that's what some people have been telling me to use this whole time. However, I used it on a PC. Well, that's not that big of a deal, but we're doing this with a PowerPC G5 computer. I don't think it's going to boot off of this. I don't think it's even going to want to touch this. But, you know, I'm going to try it anyway. It's going to start up. And it's not going to like it. Again, it's a USB 3 flash drive. And this is probably, you know, I'd be lucky if it's USB 2. Every time I power on this computer, it has a problem. And I have to, like, turn it off and turn it back on again. It's just... Terrence, what the hell? Let me guess. I have to have the side on now. Because it's sad. I don't even think it has a sensor to detect whether the side's on or not. What the hell is wrong with this thing? Oh, now it goes! <laughs> Alright, so this is our boot screen. And uh, it is not done loading yet. As you can see, there is a little watch face here and it should be coming up right there hmm it is not 
Let's see if the USB flash drive is even detected. Shit. Okay, it seems we have no excuses here. We have the one terabyte drive um, showing up. And we also have the Kingston Data Traveler that has my boot thingamajig on it. It was kind of a long shot for this to work anyway. But, if we are going to use a CD or DVD to install off of, I think instead I'm going to switch down the version, go down to version 14 uh, of uh, Linux, and just because the PowerPC image is small enough to fit on a CD. So, uh, because something tells me that if I start throwing dual layer DVDs at this thing, it's gonna croak. So let's download that instead. <laughs> Uh... Okay... You gotta be fucking kidding me! Oh my god, I wasn't even doing anything. I was just letting it sit at disk utility and it already crashed. You hear that fan running? It just keeps getting louder and louder. Remember the other videos? The videos that got really, really loud once it stopped working? Oh no... Look at this. Nothing. No, no, no. I wasn't doing anything! So since 755 megabytes is just too big, I guess we'll have to try, uh, go back to, like, the land of Linux version 12, or Ubuntu version 12, whatever, and hopefully that's a smaller image size. And to mix things up, let's go with Kubuntu this time. This is what we'll be getting. Precise Pangolin. And there's our download. Oh yeah, that'll fit nicely on a CD. So after a long time spent waiting, I finally have burned the KU... Didn't I do this last video? Uh, oh yeah, that's right. I tried to burn Weed OS on the frickin' CD before, and I preemptively already wrote the name of the disc on it before I even burned it. Never do that. In fact, I never got to burn anything because Weed OS was too dang big. So now we have... No, I don't think that's very preemptive, because that's what's on there. Except, it probably just won't work. So, let's give it a go! Oh, shit. Don't let go! Aw, oh, come on. Really? Really? I've been waiting for five years! This is bullshit. Wait. I mean, I mean, look at it. It's not, nothing's there. No. What? Come on. Really? Ah, oh, Jesus. This Power Mac G5 is becoming a pain in my ass. And the mouse is... Working, I think? I think. It didn't chime this time, and look at the blinking. What is going on here? It's good, it's good, yes! Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, the screen's on. That's a good sign. Oh, there we go. All right. I'll take this out of here. Let's see what happens. So technically, once the CD is inserted, it should just go right into booting, and without me having to press anything because it's just really looking for a system folder somewhere. Hopefully, it can find it. Hopefully it doesn't eject the disk in, like, total rejection. Got some reading activity going on. Animation has halted on the folder. Drive is spinning up. 
drive is at a constant speed. Secondary confirmation on that folder, not actually showing an animation. I'm worried, I'm very worried. And it just sits there. Let's try something else. Again, that really shouldn't have been the end all, be all, because uh, it looked for a boot up device and it failed, so it just sort of gave up. So now I'm going to start the computer while holding the C key, assuming the light doesn't blink again. Pretty much every single time the light blinks for whatever reason, I could probably look that up. And then I have to turn it off and back on again so that it will chime. This is not one of those times. Let's try again. So I'm holding the C key down. Got to power it off because, you know, it's just not going to work. It's off. It's on. Okay, thank you. I just had to point the camera at it for it to actually do it. If that's what has to happen, then that's what has to happen. That's fine. I don't care. Holy shit, it's working! We got a cursor. We got a cursor up here. That's better than nothing. I expected a lot less than that. But once it got this far, I would expect a little bit more, but... Is that really all it's gonna give me? Just a cursor. Are you serious? You're gonna tease me with this? You're really gonna tease me with that? Really? Really? You know I don't see that cursor when booting up Mac OS X normally. That's a Linux thing. Well, guess what? If this doesn't work, you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to get something called Yellow Dog Linux. That's the PowerPC Mac kind of Linux. Now, I was actually informed about on the stream a couple days ago that there's something called Amiga OS for PowerPC machines. And that is something I will be covering at some point. But for today, we're going to just be sticking with, you know, uh, Linux. And this is what happens when I hold the Option key. Nothing. That's what happens. Nothing. Someone's overdue for a PRAM reset. There we go. Let's take a look at this. Oh my sweet shit! It's a fucking Linux! It's fucking Tux! It's fucking Tux on the fucking CD, man! Oh my god! I didn't know they could shoehorn in that little icon in there! Oh my god! It doesn't- it does not do that with modern... Macs. No, not at all. How the hell do they do that? It's the fucking Linux man. So let's see if I can actually... It doesn't have any description underneath it. It's just this. So you click this, and then you click that to start up off of it. Will we get luckier this time? I don't know. Well, oh, uh, that's new. This is a Kubuntu Live CD-ROM built on this date. Default option is live. If the system fails to boot at all, the typical symptom is white screen, which doesn't go away. Use live video OF only. Press the tab key for a list of options to type help for help. So I need to type live in order to get to the live CD. So now it's working. You literally have to just try it multiple times and then it starts working. I mean, your guess is as good as mine on this. I mean, good lord. I'm trying to figure out this crap. But yeah, we are starting up Linux on a Power Mac G5 right now. And it's going to do a bunch of Linuxy things. A lot of verbosity. Kind of a weird black on white thing going on here. And I don't know if this is a kernel panic or not, because I really don't fucking know. Uh, okay. Shit. Screen is 100% black, and it's just loading things. Yep, it's just loading things, and this display is not being fed any video whatsoever. Thanks, Linux. You went from totally verbose to totally ass in two steps. I can't frickin' see anything. So this may have been that video issue they were talking about. Instead of a white screen that won't go away, I got a black screen. In fact, I got a monitor in standby mode. So I guess I can wait for a little while to see if it needs to go through its paces of, like, loading up video card drivers or something. Or I can use that old, that other console command that will make it easier by doing no video or whatever, so... I guess I'm gonna be waiting a lot. Now, I'm fairly certain my Power Mac G5 is dying, but every time I turn the camera on when I try to demonstrate what it's doing, 
it starts working again. So I'm also starting to become convinced that it'll just start working if the camera's on it. Oh, not this time. <laughs> not this time. Look at that. That's, that's weird. And some Z reset away! Okay, so let me see if I can put push the power button now and it'll just work fine. Oh shit! Okay, we may have a problem. <laughs> okay, it should be good now. Son of a bitch! Okay, so I, I, I thought I would be clever and put this in there uh, along with the mechanical drive so that if Linux decided to be magical and show this as an available option I would just, oh, let's go ahead and install it onto an SSD because hey, it finally showed up. But after I tried putting this back in, this started happening. Now, I was doing this a little bit earlier and you saw that but I believe this could be either bad RAM, bad logic board, bad God knows what else. We can start ripping some RAM out to see what it'll do, but I mean, like, holy crap, what the fuck am I going to do? I mean, it's not like I have any shortage of Power Mac G5s or anything, but still, this is ass. Alright. So there's a damn dirty RAM in there. Literally. And so what we do is we pull this out. I won't forget to put these back in this time. Now, I believe the RAM, there are eight one-gig sticks in there. So it should be pretty easy not to mess this up. That oh, was probably some bad grammar, but whatever. So the pairs, I'm assuming, see how these are mirrored? See how these are like a different brand thrown in there, randomly? So we have, we have blue, blue, green, blue, 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 green, blue. So I can only assume that this is matched with this. So I guess I'll just remove that because it looks like the Ugly Duckling, the odd one out. Of course, that could be totally incorrect. But one thing I do know is that these stupid, weird RAM configurations are different on every single different Mac. So I can look it up for this one as to what the pairing stuff is. But let's just go with this to see if I'm right. Hooray for bad camera work. Well, now there's no light at all. Well, there's a light. And it's blinking again. Crap, I forgot to put the fan in again! God damn it! So it appears my assumption about the RAM was correct in that, uh... The matching pairs go outwards like this. So these match, these match, these match, so like that. So the only thing we need to do now is remove the rest of the RAM. That's gonna be ass. Okay, I guess we'll just start pulling it out. So thus far, it's all one gig sticks. So really I could put these back in at any order I want. So right now we only have two gigs in there. I took pretty much everything out and put it right there. So if one of the RAM sticks was the problem, we could see what happens next. Oh, we're getting an error because I forgot to turn the fucking fan back in, God damn it! Don't forget to put your fan back in. And, don't forget to put that back in. There. So we're spinning over here. And we're still flashing? What the fuck? So don't ask me how, um, but I just now was able to find the blink codes on the internet. And two blinks, like, well now it's three? It's giving me two blinks and three blinks. Well anyway, three blinks is incompatible RAM types are installed. So, um, if I take out all the RAM, then it should really own one, two, three. It should really only blink twice, reporting no RAM is installed. Let's try that. Take your damn fan out. Incompatible RAM, my ass. Okay, there. 
All right, all the RAM is out of the machine, the fans are back in, and the thermal thingy is also in position. Normally, if there's no RAM, it should just beep, but we got one blink. One blink. One blink. So that's different. But then that also invalidates this entire list of blink codes that I have. Because there isn't a code for one blink. I don't know why this took so long, but I found an official Apple support article here that still exists. Uh, on its solid, computer is running. Two flashes, pause, no memory installed. So we only have one flash, pause. Three flashes pause is what it was doing before, and that's incompatible memory installed. It never did four flashes, and five and six flashes, so uh, may God help us all. So I guess it's time to put the RAM back in. I guess I'll do that. But will it blend? That is the question. Okay. So I got the, some of the RAM that wasn't blue. And, uh, I put it in the one slot, so that should just work fine. Shit. There. There it goes. Should be golden now. Three? Are you kidding? You're playing three times. Again. So if you weren't already confused enough by the last Power Mac G5 video with the video card shenanigans, oh my god, is it getting a lot more confusing. So this is a another, this one, another Power Mac G5 that you, I believe you haven't seen yet. Now to go over what which Power Mac G5 is which, and I think I can remember this, we have the first Power Mac G5 that was used in the 420 subscriber video, there's the other one that was shown in the, oh god, I don't even remember, probably the, probably the shenanigans video, and then there's this one, this is yet another one, this one is, um, has two, two gigahertz G5s, uh, 3.5 gigs of RAM, and it has that uh, 6600 LE card in it. So basically the same thing as the computer we started with in the shenanigans video, except this one apparently has an optical drive that works. It has 512 megabytes less RAM. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. It does have two 2 gigahertz G5s in it. So it's pretty close to the first Power Mac G5, in the shenanigans video, which means that I don't have any better video cards for it other than the PCI Express ones I have, and they're not very good. Case in point, the 6600 LE. So, um, I can either see if I can set up another Power Mac G5 that has AGP so I can switch the 6800 over, so that I'll, ha I'll be able to make my best G5, but all of them are getting, the ones that are left behind are pretty mediocre. So, let's try and power this thing on and move that over. Oh look, there's a red light inside, I don't know if I saw that before. Uh, click the mouse button. Oh, there's a sound I haven't heard for the past hour. But of course, all of our struggles to make the perfect Pyramac G5 um, can be set aside for now. We're just going to install Linux. Now I moved the one terabyte from here to here so that we can install Linux on it. So the difference this time is this goes right into booting it right off the bat. No waiting, no weirdness, it just goes. So I think we can just type live, and uh, did I type live? I, I think it just went ahead without me. Loading up a RAM disk, so basically exactly what it just did. So already we're having a smoother experience with this Power Mac G5 than we are with the other one. The other one I spent a lot of time waiting for and had to keep constantly rebooting it and kept getting stuck. 
this is where the other one got stuck at his black screen and did a little flash there. Oh, but what is this? This is some progress right here. We got a little gear. You may have noticed that I'm trying to dodge every version of Linux other than the core Ubuntu. So yeah, this is how it really should have gone from the beginning. Put it in, it works. I'm pretty much going to get rid of the other G5 now because holy crap, that's annoying. <laughs> oh god. Oh, what the hell? Okay, so we got the screen with a hard disk and a pretty cool looking mouse, I guess. I will say that the fans sound a bit more beastly on this one. Okay. Okay, so we're loading stuff up. All right, all right. Hey, that's pretty slick. Not bad. Hello. This looks pretty sweet. Runs the fans like fucking crazy. Woo! Look at all these goodies. File manager. Man, this desktop environment is delicious. I'm so glad I picked it. Alright, uh... So this is all the stuff on the live CD. You know, this thing started up so well, and on the first try... What if it actually is possible? What if it actually will detect this with Linux launched or something? I'm gonna have to install it. We can't install Linux yet until I know that this thing absolutely will not work. Even though I'm sure all of you guys know I'm fucking crazy and it's not gonna work. I gotta do it anyway, cause I would be, it's gonna keep me up at night, so... Shut her down. Damn, this thing looks good. Uh... Okay. <laughs> it started to take it in, and then it stopped. <laughs> that was funny. Alright, well, let's put this damn thing in. Uh, since you can have two drives in this, um, I'll install both the mechanical drive and this, and if theory serves, uh, just the mechanical drive should show up. But if through some miracle this shows up, hell, we'll just put it on this. So let's, let me rearrange some stuff in here. All right. Both drives are installed. Let's hope that ST will suddenly be detected under magical Linux. Now it didn't hold any keys, I just let it go. I sent it to just automatically enter in the word live, and it'll start up. Okay, so it looks great. It works. Uh, the only downside so far is that it makes the fan run really loud. Okay. Uh, it's very fancy. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit this install Ubuntu. Alright. Please choose the language. So we are installing an older version of Linux because the newer ones are just too big. Uh, so if I connect to the internet, it should work. Plug the ethernet cable in and there it goes. I could download and updates while installing. I guess I'll let it do that too. So the next setup is disk setup. And it does only detect the one terabyte drive. So, guided, manual, so not a big surprise there. So it's going to go for a full allocation with Kubuntu before, after, just so that there's nothing on there I guess. It's a blank drive after all. And I wonder once I finish installing this, can I plug this drive into other Macs and have them boot up? That would be interesting. At some point, I'll have to get that older SSD to get working with the G5s. 
and it is copying files right now. There's this cool thing up here where it continues to copy files at the top while you go to the rest of the setup. Pretty efficient. This is keyboard layout. Your name! Alright. Definitely something unique. This is really easy going. Like, I'm not running into any problems. Everything is going smoothly exactly how it really should be going. Uh, thank you for choosing Kubuntu. Please, your computer should be free to work in the environment they choose. Okay. It's designed to be easy. Feel free to explore. Because I'm a dipshit when it comes to Linux. Hey, look, it's a typewriter. Please wait 5%. LibreOffice is a powerful lava software. Ah, retrieving file. So it's probably actually downloading the um, updates now. Assuming this is like a minimize button. Yep. So, it's going to be a little while before it's done, but it'll be fully updated. And I just turned the camera off, and the fans are dying down. It's not bad. It's now becoming tolerable again. Installation has finished. You can continue testing. Ubuntu now, but until you restart the computer, any changes you make or a document you save will not be preserved. We start now, and when it gives us the opportunity, we will eject the disk. Ah, it closed all the way that time. <laughs>